The Barrel House is brought to you by you, the listener, and those of you who have chosen to support the show over at patreon.com slash barrelhouse, especially our Whiskey Legend tier patrons, Greg, Katie, Lauren, and Joe. Without you, the show wouldn't be possible. Hello, and welcome to The Barrel House. Yes, and welcome back to The Barrel House. I am your host, Joe Kane, and today we're getting into the new, the latest, the second collaboration between Nick Offerman and the legendary distillery Lago Hulin. Uh, this is a fun one. I was really excited to find this one when I did, and I can't wait to talk about it. Uh, it's it's like summer. I mean, I don't know what it's like where you are, but this week has been great. It's been sitting on the deck with the dog, Stogie, and whiskey. It's been really great, and I'm super excited for all of the whiskey adventures to come. Plus, the world is like opening up. I might actually get to get into a distillery here pretty soon. It's, it's whiskey season. I'm excited. Um, so let's get into this whiskey. Let's do this, right? So like I said, this is the second collaboration between Offerman and Lago Hulin. It is aged 11 years and then finished four months in X Guinness casks. Super interested in this. It's pretty exciting. Uh, it's really interesting. You know, I've had a little bit of this. I'm really, I'm really liking what the Lago Hulin and Guinness are doing together. Uh, but it's a kind of a weird thing. We'll get into that. Uh, Offerman his words on this one. This is kind of a Father's Day release. The Guinness casks are inspired by his father's love of Guinness. He's a big Lago Hulin fan. Bada bing, bada boom. There you go, Lago Hulin in Guinness. Um, He he quoted, I saw him talking about the opportunity to do a second collaboration with Lago Hulin, and he said, the opportunity to collaborate on this truly sublime, smoky, giggly juice renews my gratitude for the simple things in like life like a father's love and good manners he taught me uh i think offerman's probably the coolest guy there is i just feel like he'd be really fun to hang out with like i said he's a huge alaga hulan fan he's much like his famous parks and rec alter ego there ron swanson they do a whole episode of uh this he also appears in some lago hulan ads and obviously he's done these collabs too with them so he's like a big lago hulan guy and this shows because he definitely picked a thing to make the drink he wanted here. It's really good. Like I said, the timing of the release is intentional. This is a Father's Day kind of thing. This is 46% ABV. It's got an MSRP of $79.99. I actually found it for a little bit less than MSRP when I found it, which is strange, but I'll take it. I'm happy to have it. I'm happy to have it at less than MSRP. Uh, it wasn't much, though. I think it was $75, but definitely worth it. I'll say that. It's a little more than the eight year, a bit less than the 16. I think it's a lot better than the eight year. I think personally, I like the 16 better. I, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Let's get into this thing. Let's get into this Lago Hulin Offerman Guinness collab here. On the nose, the first hit you get is brine. The brine stands out right away to me. It's numero uno. Uh, Then you get the peat, the smoke comes through afterwards, but you get a ton of that dark chocolate, dark roast coffee from the Guinness. There's like salted caramel, a little bit of like an amber honey. There's a dark fruit on this, Um, maybe a little bit of raisin, a little plum. Uh, There's another fruit there. Um... Maybe it's pruny. Maybe it's a bit pruny. I did um, I did this. So for Patreon members, you just saw me do a quick run through of this. Uh, for the rest of you, you have not quite yet, but I'm going to get into this deep, obviously. Um, I did this a little bit. Uh, this was a first sip episode that came out last week. Uh, I opened the bottle and gave everybody my absolute first impressions on the thing. Um, and you can, if you are interested in that kind of content where you get to see me, my initial reactions to a thing I've never tasted, they're not real in depth. They're just a real quick first reactions. Those are available at patreon.com slash barrel house. If not, don't worry. You get the episodes here. The nose on this is interesting because it does have, I mean, this kind of transfers the whole way through as you'll see, as we talk, there's definitely Lago Hulin in this. But the Guinness really stands up to the, all that dominant Lago Hulin Isla notes. And some of it actually kind of washes some of that out. 
on the palate, you definitely still get that brine, and it's got some of that meaty, a little bit of that phenolic diesel kind of stuff that was like borderline caustic kind of tastes uh, in a good way that I mentioned in the 16. But the dark roast coffee beans and the dark chocolate really step into focus. You can really taste it. This this really really tastes like this tastes more like so when you so when you finish a whiskey, right? Typically, you know, there's a couple ways you go about it, but typically it's just a couple of months and usually what you do is you you drain the barrel out. You let it dry. Some places will even do will, will even sweat the barrel. They'll put it in a really hot place to try to force as much of the whiskey out or of the previous liquid out before they put the whiskey in to try to get the influence to be wood influence but however that wood has chemically changed from whatever was in there last you know so say it's a sherry barrel or in this case guinness you would get everything out and while the while the sherry or guinness was in that barrel it would have affected it would have deposited some of its chemical makeup it would have taken some of the woods out with it you know it would there would be some transformative some chemical reactions and typically when you finish you're tasting those when you drink a finished whiskey you're tasting those influences in the whiskey right this tastes more like someone put a little guinness in to lagerhulen i i don't think that they would that that's what they did i, I believe they probably did get as much of the, out of the barrels before they put it in there and it was only four months but i guess the the Guinness influence is so much closer to just the taste of Guinness as is than you typically get out of like sherry or something where you definitely get you don't get as much of the like sherry has like mustiness and it's got some like like nutty funk and and that kind of stuff that you don't necessarily you might associate to some degree with the sherry but it does not taste like you're drinking sherry in your whiskey this does taste a little bit like there is just Guinness trade of Guinness in this um, the color is weird though. The color is not like there's Guinness in it. The color is the most yellow hued whiskey I've seen. And I mean yellow. I don't mean gold. I don't mean certainly not caramel colored. It's not an amber hue. It is, it's not even like really straw. It's almost like fluorescing yellow. Um, you'll see in pictures, I'm sure. Uh, it doesn't look unnatural or anything, but it is a, a very distinct color for me. Uh, side by side with the Lagerhulen is definitely uh, the, with the 16 there's definitely a noticeable difference and i wonder if that has something to do with the barrel the way the barrel either the wood they use for the guinness or the way the the guinness affected that so yeah definitely smoky it's creamy on the palate a lot of that like fruity a lot of the fruity notes that you normally would see i normally get with Lagerhulen feel washed away i don't get them as much I get a little bit here and there. If I really hunt for it, I can find a little raisin or something, but it is way more, it's way more like rich and creamy and less light and fruity than you normally get in the, the side, the backgrounds of a Lagerhulen. The, 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 you know, the things that the smoke usually is wrapped around don't feel as strong. The Guinness really, really had a big impact on this. It's I like it a lot, but it is different. It is definitely different than you normally see out of Lagerhulen. Um, th that actually stands true the most in the finish. The Guinness notes all, I mean, besides the dark roast coffee, which kind of just hangs, the rest of the Guinness notes fall off fairly quickly in the finish, but all those salty, briny, phenolic notes that typically are in the Lagerhulen finish, they fall off quickly too comparatively like they they're there but overall the whole finish feels kind of washed out compared to like on the 16 i mean the, the the dark roast coffee hangs out a little while and the saltiness hangs a bit but primarily the whole finish feels like it kind of just went with the guinness it's the finish, I would say, is the most disappointing part of this bottle. Um, I, you know, I think stacked up, I think the, the finish on the 16 is way better, way, way better. But this is, it is less expensive. It is younger. It's a higher proof, just barely. 
Um, but it is, it is really good. I mean, overall, this is a really good pour. I, mean, I think you do pay a little bit for the limited nature of it and the like collab and, you know, you get a, the label has Offerman's face on it, his, his bearded gaze looking at you from the front of the bottle. It's, I mean, it's a different lane though, which I think is really cool. I, I, I don't know that if I felt like I wanted to drink Lagavulin 16, I would come down and say, ah, man, am I going to grab the uh, Offerman 11 or am I going to grab the 16? Mm, what am I? Um, it's not a coin flip. This is distinctly different mood for me. This is, I know Lagavulin is definitely a little on the subtle side compared to like an Ardbeg, which was where I really like to live. But this is, again, even more subtle than the 16. There's still lots of flavor just as far as like those stereotypical isla flavors that really come out swinging it's considerably more subtle so if you like both lagahulan and guinness i definitely say grab a bottle and check it out if you don't like either or one of them is really not your jam probably not gonna like this i mean if you don't like guinness you won't like this you can taste enough guinness in here i mean i don't think you would I'd be, I, I, if you do not like Guinness and you do buy a bottle of this, let me know what you think. Because I, I feel like there's enough Guinness influence in this. If you don't like Guinness, you would be turned off. But either way, whether you like them both and grab a bottle or only like one of them and grab a bottle out of curiosity. If you do, let me know what you think. I'm very curious to see what different ends. I love both of them. So to me, this is a home run bottle. It's just... It's not going to be a go-to for sure. If, But wherever you are on the spectrum, let me know what you'd think when you try it. I know a couple of the people over in the Discord mentioned, I mean, Cab mentioned he was going to grab some. So, and uh, that you can get that that conversation is in the Discord, eargluemedia.com slash Discord. That is a free invite. Just go there. You'll get an invite to the EGM Discord channel. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there and you'll be able to find the Barrel House channel there. There's a... Uh, everything there's films like film appraiser all that but the basement all that ready player one stuff there's the star wars stuff from the cantina cast all that stuff petticoats and poppies um it's all there so jump in if you want to get any of that talk uh, that's gonna do it for today as always send your questions to me at barrelhousepodcast at gmail.com like i said hit me up on the discord get into those conversations at eerglymedia.com slash discord please rate and review the show on itunes it goes a lot farther than you think it does so i would really appreciate it if you could bring yourself to doing that get your social media links and everything else you could possibly want from me at barrelhousepodcast.com especially if you are interested in the live streams or any of that stuff follow me on instagram because that's where i post the most regular updates as far as scheduling all that stuff uh, and the website's also always updated. And of course, patreon.com slash barrelhouse for your support needs because you are all freaking awesome. And even if you can't or don't want to or aren't ready to pull the trigger on Patreon, that's fine. Please just tell everyone you know about this show. That is almost as helpful, maybe even more, depending on how many people you get to subscribe. <laughs> so that's all. I will talk to you all soon. Take care. The Barrel House is written, produced, and hosted by Joe Kane, and it's a proud member of the Earglue Media Network. Views and opinions expressed on this show belong only to the mouth they came out of. And as always, please remember to drink responsibly. Slanjava. Slanjava.